In section 1.2, we are going to be solving multi-step equations. Now, this is going to be review from last year, so let's do a quick review problem in understanding how you solve multi-step equations. So let's do the example. 3x plus 1 equals 13. Multi-steps. Obviously, it means more than one step. Multi-steps. Now, keep in mind that your goal is to use inverse operations to isolate the variable. You have to get the variable, which in this problem is x by itself. Now, the first thing you always get rid of is add or subtracting. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of the addition or the subtraction. So in this problem, we have an addition of 1. So what is the opposite of adding 1? You're going to subtract 1 on both sides. That would leave us with 3x equals 12. The next thing you have to get rid of is getting rid of multiplication or division. So in this problem, you have to get rid of multiplying by 3. So then you're going to divide both sides by 3. And therefore, your answer is x equals 4. Now, there's more to it than that, but this is a basic multi-step equation. So let's start with our, our second example. And this is right out of your book, if you have your book. This is on page 12 in your textbook, but you need to write this in your notes. So pause the video and write this problem down. The height in feet of a tree after x years is 1.5x plus 15. After how many years is the tree 24 feet tall? So the first thing you have to do is write an equation. So we know 1.5 feet, I'm sorry, 1.5x plus 15 represents the height of the tree. Well, let's look at what x means. And this is why it takes a little bit of a time to understand a problem. x stands for what? Years. So it's asking us after how many years. So we need to find x when the tree is 24 feet tall. So how tall is the tree? 24 feet. This also represents the height of the tree. So then our equation would just be 1.5x plus 15 equals 24. That's it. So let's solve this. How do I get rid of a plus 15? Well, I'm going to subtract 15 on both sides. That would leave us with what? 1.5x equals 9. Next step. Times 1.5, the opposite of timesing by 1.5, and a half, is dividing by 1.5. And, and 9 divided by 1.5 is 6. Once again, this is a word problem. You must tell me what this means in a word problem. After. How many years is the tree 24 feet tall? So your answer would be, after how many years? Six years. And that is your answer. Example number three. 8x minus 6x minus 25 equals negative 35. Now in this problem, there is something first that you want to do. And this is important to always keep remembering this. Always check first if you can combine like terms. And in this problem, you can. Like terms. You should remember this from last year. 8x minus 6x. They are like terms. So what is 8x minus 6x? It would be 2x, and everything else comes straight down. 2x minus 25 equals negative 35. Next step, I have to get rid of a minus 25. So how do I get rid of a minus 25? You're going to add 25 to both sides. That would give us 2x equals negative 35 plus 25. Just because it says plus does not mean you add. This is a negative. This is a positive. These are different signs. We subtract them. 35 minus 25 is 10. Because the negative number where we have more negatives, your answer is negative 10. Last step, divide both sides by 2 because that is the opposite of timesing by 2. So my answer would be x equals 
negative 5 because negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. Let's do another example. Negative 4n minus 8n plus 17 equals 23. What should I do first? You should combine like terms. Because you have a negative 4 and a negative 8, these are the same sign, I add them. Negative 4n and negative 8n is negative 12n, and that is all review. You should have no problem with that because you learned that last year. Negative 12n plus 17 equals 23. What's the next step? I have to subtract 17 on both sides. So that gives me negative 12n equals 23 minus 17 is 6. Now this is not a minus 12, this is a negative 12 times n. So I have to get rid of a times. What's the opposite of times negative 12? It'd be divide, not by 12, but by negative 12. What's 6 divided by 12? Do not tell me 2. 6 divided by 12, that would be negative 6 twelfths. But 6 twelfths can be divided by 6, so negative 6 twelfths becomes negative 1 half. You have to simplify your fraction, or 0 0.5. Negative 1 half or negative 0 0.5 would be an acceptable answer. The next thing we are going to review is distributive property. I am hoping you all remember what the distributive property is. The distributive property is when you take something outside and multiply it by everything on the inside of a set of parentheses. So let's go over a few examples. This is basic review. 3 times 2x plus 4. You are taking 3 times the entire 2x plus 4. So you're going to have 2x plus 4, 2x plus 4, 2x plus 4 three times. So you have to distribute 3 times 2x. That's 6x, 3 times 4 is 12. So we're just going over a few review problems here of distributive property. Next example, negative 3 times y minus 2. In this problem, you're going to distribute the negative 3. So I'm going to take negative 3 times everything in the parentheses. Negative 3 times y would be negative 3y. Negative 3 times negative 2. Negative 3 times negative 2. What's a negative times a negative? Positive 6. And that is my answer. So now, you're, you don't have problems that are that easy tonight. Your problems are not easy like that on the homework for tomorrow during class. These problems are going to be within an equation. So let's write number 7 down. 2 times the difference of 1 and 5x plus 4 equals negative 8. So now you have one extra step. One extra step, and here it is. Get rid of the parentheses. Always get rid of parentheses. Always get rid of parentheses. Always get rid of parentheses. So in this problem, what are you going to do to get rid of your parentheses? You are going to distribute the 2. So you are going to get 2 times 1, which is 2, and 2 times negative 5, which is negative 10x. Plus 4 equals negative 8. Now we are going to do with what we did in example number 3 and 4. Combine like terms. So, if you look here, we have a 2, we have a plus 4. Those are our like terms. So if I add those together, the negative 10x comes down. 2 plus 4 gives us 6 equals negative 8. Now we get rid of the multi I'm sorry, the addition and subtraction first, then the multiplication and division. So what do we need to get rid of first? 
we need to get rid of a plus 6. So we are going to subtract 6, subtract 6. That gives us negative 10x equals negative 14. We now have to get rid of a times negative 10. Times negative 10. What's the opposite of timesing by negative 10? Dividing by negative 10. Remember, this is review. Your integers are review here. So now we have a negative divided by a negative, a negative divided by a negative, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. 14 divided by 10. 14 divided by 10 is 1.4. So my answer would be 1.4. This is the last problem. This is where you take everything you know about, about previous knowledge, what you've done in the past, and you're going to apply it to an equation. This is what makes this book difficult. This is what uses your brain. This is what makes math understandable to you and applies to what you're going to do. So let's look at this problem. Use the table. The table is over here on the right. To find the number of miles x, you need to run on Friday so that the mean number of miles run per day is 1.5. It sounds difficult. It's not. Look at the problem again. Use the table to find the number of miles x that you need to run on Friday so that the mean number of miles per day is 1.5. What's the key word that you see in this problem? mean. And here is where your elementary math background has to come into play here. Mean. What does the mean? If I wanted to find the mean of a group of numbers, here are all the numbers. How do you find the mean? You should understand that you have to find the sum of all of the numbers. You add all of the numbers up and you divide by how many numbers are there. So that's all you do. Let's add the numbers up. I'm going to take all of these numbers, 2, 0, 1.5, 0, and x, add them all together. So here's our equation, 2 plus 0 plus 1.5 plus 0 plus x. I just added all of my numbers together. I then divide. How many numbers are over here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I divide them all by 5. Equals... Well, what does my mean have to equal? My mean has to equal 1.5, so equals 1.5. Follow the steps that we were taught in this section, so let's review. Step one, get rid of parentheses. I don't have any. Step two, combine like terms. You can add all the numbers together, so let's add them together. 2 plus 0 plus 1.5 plus 0. Well, that's just 2 plus 1.5. That's 3.5. Divided by 5 equals 1.5. Now, in this problem, all of the numerator is divided by 5, so I have to get rid of this divided by 5 first. So all you have to do is the opposite. Divided by 5. Divided by 5. What is the opposite of dividing by 5? you are timesing both sides by 5. So remember, the whole purpose is to cancel these. 5, right here, divided by 5, that just gives us 1, so that cancels. So all I am left with is 3.5 plus x equals 1.5 times 5 gives us 7.5. Now, the only thing I have to get rid of is a plus 3.5. What is the opposite of plus 3.5? The opposite of plus 3.5? Subtract 3.5. So I get x equals 7.5 minus 3.5 gives 4. So here's the question. Did you answer the question? Find the number of miles x that you need to run on Friday. How many miles do I need to run? four miles on Friday. So my answer is four miles.